It was three years ago when Manchester United got absolutely pumped at Goodison Park. It was 4-0, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer speaking in his post-match press conference saying that there's a lot of these United players who are never going to play for Manchester United again. And then that defeat there, that 1-0 to Everton at Goodison Park, it might not have been the same sort of mauling, but there were six players from that team that faced Everton a good few years ago that started yesterday. That whole midfield, Pogba, Matic and Fred, they all started. Rashford started up front. De Gea started. Who else started? Lindelof? He didn't start yesterday. I know he did, actually. Lindelof too. Six players from that 11 that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer said would never play for our club again. All started. It's almost like Manchester United have really, truly not done... Somehow, Manchester United have spent so much money without seemingly spending much money. So much wasted money, so many wasted signings, just pure and utter waste, dragging this club downwards into a spiral, which it just only seems to gather pace. We all thought that Ed Woodward leaving was going to be a significant moment, but, you know, might take this club forward, but... We're no closer to winning that league than we were a few years ago. We finished second on, under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. We finished second under, um, the third under Mourinho. Either way, it doesn't fucking matter. We've been so far off it for so long. And I'm trying to take a few days away and actually enjoy a bit of holiday. But it's, it's not really possible. We're watching this, watching this United team. and uh, You know full well here in United People's TV how excited I am about the idea of Eric Ten Hag coming in. But I look at it and I just... I fear the worst. Look, I did a video a couple of days ago. I did a keep or sell. I'll run through that list here. He's, th these were the players I said I'd keep. Bruno Fernandes, Fred, Dean Henderson, Raphael Varane, Delo, Matomane, Hannibal, Palistri, Sancho, Ilanga, Van der Beek and Ahmed. There really are, I said this in my match reaction, that there are, there are so few of these players that I would genuinely get into an argument with to defend right now. That's the sort of level that these players have, have forced us fans into. And genuinely, I'm doing this video because I want to know where... It's the morning after the night before. What's your opinion on this whole situation? I don't just want to let this fester for 48 hours and come back and... Because I'll be back on Tuesday morning with the live streams, as always, here on United People's TV. But I feel like this is a conversation that has to be had today. What happens next? Where do we turn before Eric Ten Hag comes in? Because... I tell you what, man, the job's always been massive for any manager who's come into our club. You know, from Moyes trying to replace Fergie, that was the impossible job. It really was. Poison chalice. But now it's been a poison chalice ever since. Louis van Gaal, he was fighting against the Ed Woodward ego, egotistical maniac machine that he was. And, and, and he couldn't do anything, in my opinion. Obviously, I think his football was probably the most boring I think we've still, we still have seen post Fergie. But then Mourinho came in. And we all knew that wasn't going to work because of the structure of our board. Now, yesterday, I got, I'm got i not going to an argument on Twitter, but people are just, they're trying to bring up Conte again. Like Conte would have been a good idea at Manchester United. It would not have been a good idea. It would have been an absolute, yeah, I called it a clusterfuck because it's exactly what it would have been. It would have been a short term stopgap, probably improvement that left United high and dry at the end of it. And it's that mentality that has dragged us into this mess. As I said, that team that lost 4-0 against Everton at Goodison Park three years ago, six of those players started. The exact same midfield started. We've managed to spend so much, so much goddamn money. And we've just overlooked the key part of the entire team, which in my opinion is the midfield. It's the bit that links the defence to the mid. It links everything together. Without that in mid, in, without your midfield, you're having to kick it long. You're having to hope for things. You're having to play around it because you can't play through it. It's just staggering. It, it, it's staggering that our club has, has been allowed to get dragged into this mess. And now we're talking about Ronaldo slapping phones out of kids' hands as the biggest talking point from the game. No, Ronaldo shouldn't have done that. But Jesus, like people are trying to call it assault. I've seen the video. He slaps it out of his hand. The kid's laughing literally immediately straight away. Ronaldo shouldn't have done it. He's apologised. I'm sure he'll replace the phone. Although he has offered to take the kid to Old Trafford. I think, you know, he's suffered enough. Let's not do that. 
But it's just a joke, man. It's just a joke. And other clubs are laughing at us. And they have every right to laugh at us. Manchester United, once upon a time, the cream of the crop in the Premier League. The club that everybody aspired to be. The, the club that so many players aspired to join and be part of. And now, I don't know at what point our laughing stock switches. I still have huge hope for what happens if or when Eric Ten Hag comes in. I think it's the right and correct appointment. And I, 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 I really genuinely, from the bottom of my heart, hope that it's the beginning of a structural change inside our club that has sucked the life out of us. Because we all know this goes back to the top. And people, of other fans of other clubs, they can all just piss off. Oh, you know, when you're losing, all you do is moan about the Glazers and then all of a sudden... You... No, we fucking don't. Back in 2010, we were in the midst of being in three Champions League finals in four years and winning league titles for fun. We were protesting. We protested after the European Super League. We protested back in 2005 because we could all see it coming. When that is the mentality from the top and that attitude infects the whole squad, every fibre of your club, it allows situations like this to manifest. And it has manifested. To the point now where <sighs> we're talking about a full-scale rebuild again. And I can't disagree with it. It's just that's how badly the money's been spent. That's how badly the situation has sort of grown into it at United. As I said, I genuinely from the bottom of my heart, I thought we were one midfielder away from competing for the Premier League at the start of the season. One midfielder. Then we sacked our manager in November, and now we're here in April, and I'm talking about a full-scale rebuild again. Just the... There's, the, the disconnect has, has come back between... I, I thought that had been closed under Solskjaer. I thought he brought the squad a little bit closer together and brought the fans closer towards those players again. But just seeing just... They don't give a fuck, man. They don't give a fuck. They are entitled, entitled footballers who really feel that they're not fortunate to play for Manchester United. It's just a job. I'll just move to another club that doesn't work out. I don't really give a shit. And there's so, many, there's so few players who, who avoid being dropped into that category. So I might have done that video there on who I keep. But in reality, man, there's, there's so few players inside this squad that I genuinely would get into an argument with to defend. So few. So much has happened. So many games, like the Leicester game and that game against Everton. No, no bite. No. You, you, you sound like a cliche pundit when you try and assess Manchester United games anymore because the absolute fundamentals and the basics just are not there. And when they're not there, that's all you can talk about. You know, the be, being first to that second ball, intensity, X, Y, Z, the shit that you tell under 15s before they go out and play on a Sunday morning. That's the sort of stuff that Manchester United players do not do. Of course, it was going to be difficult against Everton, who were at Goodison Park in a relegation scrap. It was never going to be an easy game. But I'll tell you what, any team of quality in that first 30 minutes would have put two past Everton easily. Would have been game set and match probably before half time. <laughs> Instead, we didn't. We couldn't. And we lost 1 0. And as I said, that, that is that thing that stuck in my head there. That three years ago, we had that 4 0, and Solskjaer said that so many of these players won't play for United again. And six of them started. Six of them started. I just don't know what to say anymore. As this season has progressed, you know, you run out of, you run out of this, you run out of things to say. Because if you're having the same conversation time and time and time and time and time again, it means you're repeating mistakes. And I don't like repeating mistakes. When it comes to mistakes in life, you learn from mistakes. You go, oh, that didn't work last time. So next time I'm going to improve it. But nothing has truly changed under... I, look, I've said this before and I'll say it again. You know, people try to throw Radnik under the bus now. He was brought in on a six-month interim role, having not been a football manager for two and a bit years. It was not his... That was not what he was brought in for. He was brought in for the two-year consultancy role that's coming after. He was brought in to try and steady the ship. And I've told you, after one game, we were pressing as a team in the unit against Crystal Palace. One training session, sorry. Amazing. What happened? Players weren't fit enough to, con to hold that for 90 minutes. Soon after that, Ralph Rannick realised that his 4 triple two system would not work with this set of entitled, lazy fucking footballers. That's just all they are. 
And it's why you look at a player like Fred and you sometimes look at a player like Matoma and you go, you know what? Why can't we have more of that? Why can't we have a player who seemingly wants to fucking work for his wage? It's a huge way. It's such a privileged position they get into. And they just, they seem to take it for granted immediately. They don't want to work for it. And it just drives that disconnect between United fans and the United team and our club. We're in the mud. We've been in the mud for a long time. But I'll tell you one thing right now. And I mean this. If we don't get it right this time, this summer with Eric Ten Hag, hopefully Ralph Rangnick going into a decent role with some power, maybe someone like Paul Mitchell coming. If we don't get it right this time and we... We, we could go 30 years. We really could repeat and probably beat Liverpool's 30 years. It's at this point now where we either really shift and change and accept our mistakes, accept our responsibilities, because it's not been about a lack of investment. We've spent a ton of money. But we gave the wrong people the wallet. The people we've bought, the players we've bought, it's all been money spent incorrectly. It has to be better, it has to be smarter. And we have to move on as a club. And if we do that this summer, I think we can then look at the next few years under Eric Ten Hag, hopefully, and we can look at it with optimism. We can say step by step, we're getting there. But I tell you what, this player working underneath Eric Ten Hag, geez, if you've watched any Ajax games, they've got no fucking chance, man. They're going to start crying. They're going to start throwing up on the side of the pitch. They'll have no chance in working under his system. But he is a man who is built on his system. He won't change from it. He won't adapt it like Ralph Randnick has for these players. They will have to get used to it or get out of the club. And after that Everton game, after what I've seen year on year on year, so many of these players, the majority of these players can just get out of the club. I don't want to see them there anymore. And I'm, I'm done with them. I said it in my match reaction yesterday. I've, I've had a little bit more time to think about it now. But what do you think? You let me know in the comments below. As I said, I'll be back on Tuesday with the live videos. But I've, we've really got to have this conversation today, I think, because Manchester United, right now, we just look done as a football club. We really do. And so, majority of this squad, they can just get out. Simple as that. I will not miss you.